Hey everybody, sorry for the gap between these two tutorials. We're going to continue on with our verse education. I have modified a tutorial that is out there right now. It's about some creature spawners and stuff like that and triggers. So we're going to walk through here and we're going to get some creatures that show up and I'm going to murder them immediately. And then we'll walk forward a little bit more and we'll see that we get even more. And then we'll do it again. And there's another one. Go a little bit more, and then we get one more. And then we'll go a little bit further and we'll see that no more creatures come out. And we can finally get to our helicopter and take off. <laughs> Just jump out of the helicopter. Anyway, so we're going to learn how to do this little bit and talk about variables and constants and if statements, things that are very, very important in verse. OK, so we are inside of UEFN. And once again, we'll talk about everything that's in here. We've got our game manager left over from the last tutorial on this, two spawners and a VFX device from the other tutorial. And we've got some triggers in here also from the other tutorial and creature placers. The rest of this is just environment. This is a helicopter that you can spawn and a building I got from Bash. I really do encourage you to use proper environment, some kind of story, some kind of reason of why you're doing the coding that you're doing so that it feels better. You're going to be working with code and it's very boring in many cases. So when you're practicing or testing or playing around, I really do think that it just takes, you know, it takes very little time to create some kind of environment, some kind of story to make it a little bit more interesting to learn with. Anyhow, so these are all the things that we're using inside of our code. And uh, let's take a look at the code then. OK, so now we're inside of the verse code here. And uh, let's take a look at everything that's going on and why we're doing things. Now, if you don't remember from last time, you can take Control B and get rid of your Explorer on the left hand side. I'm going to do that to just make a little bit more space. So we've got our usual stuff sitting up here for our imports. We talked about that last time. We've still got our player spawners. We now have step triggers one, two and three because there are three in the scene. We've got our VFX spawner that does the VFX thing. And our creature placers, all of these have been covered in the other tutorial that is public. And uh, you can check that out. And then we've got some new stuff going on in here where we're going to be using a constant and some variables. And we're going to talk about the type of variables and why we want to use a constant, how we define it and why. We've got the usual stuff from before, the spawners and the triggers and the creature places we've already talked about. Everything is pretty much the same other than we're going to do one thing different. And that is to check out how many limbs we have of the creatures. So we're going to keep track of these things. Keeping track of your stats is usually really, really important in a game because then we can do a comparison here that will say, hey, how many have we killed? Is it a lot? Is it a little? Should we still do more stuff here? And that's what we're going to cover here. So let's do this quickly. I'm going to make this story a little bit shorter compared to the last one so that we can cover bits and pieces and keep moving forward quicker. OK, so when you make a new creative device right here, this is our game manager. Any type of creative device like this is going to have your editables and it's going to have your variables and constants and things like this to define what you can do in the game, how you can do it and how long you can do it for essentially. So the first thing that I've done here is made a max creature elims. It is an int and I've equaled it to nine. Now, this is a constant, not a variable. We use constants and variables in games all the time. What makes this a constant is that it doesn't have the VAR in front of it, which is what defines a variable. So this here is a value that can change, but a constant never changes. We're going to leave it only at nine. Even if we tried to change it, we would get an error. In this case, when we're making constants, I highly encourage you to capitalize them and use the underscore method of naming it to sort of define it a little bit different in your code, make it easier to find, even though you can just double click this and hit Control F, which will bring up the find. Uh, it's still easier to see when you've made these uh, capitalizations and underscores compared to all of your other variable names, which are what's called camel case, where the beginning of the word is capitalized and the rest is lowercase. 
Now, this is a variable. Variables are defined with the var in front of it. And then we're going to set the type. These are all integers, so int is int. Here we have one called logic, which is true or false, and another true or false here. Both of these are set to false by default. And this is set to zero because our current creature limbs is zero to start the game with. So this value here can be changed and should be changed because we need to track how many limbs we have of the zombies or the creatures in the game. And then when we reach the max creature elims amount, we're going to make a decision on what to do. So let's take a look at that. So the creature placer device allows us to place a creature in the game, obviously. And we can subscribe to the eliminated event just like this. And we're going to call on creature eliminated. It's just a method down. So just like in the last tutorial, we got on player spawn, which we did nothing with. We're going to call on creature eliminated. And in here, when that creature is eliminated, we're going to add one to current creature limbs because this is our tracking data point and we use the word set in front of it otherwise you'll get an error and we'll go plus equals one now you can do plus equals one or current creature limbs we can do this as well we can go equals current creature limbs plus one you can do that as well but we can shorten that to just plus equals one which is very handy so we're adding one to the limbs count that we're tracking for the game. Then we're going to listen on the on step on trigger method here. We're going to say, hey, is the current creature elims still smaller than the max creature elims? If so, go ahead and create a creature and uh, or actually three creatures. But if it's equal to or greater, then just don't do this because this will never run. And this is what an if statement is. So I actually wanted to cover really quickly if statements as well. We use them all the time, but I want to cover them in a little bit more detail here. This is how I write if statements, but you can write them in other ways. The other way to write them, which is really common, if we go if, and we're just going to copy all of this out like this. And I'll show you the other way, because right now we're using a colon at the end, but you can do this with the uh, curly brackets. So this is a more understandable way if you ever come from JavaScript or many other languages actually that use these curly brackets to encapsulate what we're going to do for a certain thing. And then the other way to do it, we can go if and then put a colon here. Uh, current creature elims is smaller than max elims. And then we'll go then and then put some stuff inside here. In fact, what we would do is we put this here and here. And these three ways of doing an if statement are all exactly the same. Other than it's slightly different on how to write it, they all do the same thing. So hopefully that is a little bit interesting to learn. We've done a little bit there for constants and variables, which are very useful. And we also figured out how to use an if statement. So I'm going to make this one short. We're going to get into maps and arrays in the next one so we can start saving more data in different ways and using it in our game. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.